Hello, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina. Thank you for joining us. This is going to be a timeless collective reading. Once again, reading the daily collective vibrations, energies going through the ethers. Under the deck, we had prosperity there. Before I picked it up and started shuffling, we have our cards all pre-shuffled, warmed up, ready to talk to us. And let's just see where everything is at. I like to do, get these sacred geometry activations, oracle deck cards, these code cards to show us what we are working with right now. The first one to fall off is Remembrance. Soul time and prosperity still under the deck here. So taking time to remember what holds true value for ourselves. Remembering maybe the way things used to be, the, maybe some of you from a small town, some of true value hardware signed from back in the day. Allowance. Cosmic flower flew off and allowance. Just crook it in the deck. Let's get just a couple more. Healing under the deck. So 18 is a 9, and allowance is 9, so... And then 38 is an 11. So we have 1199 9, instead of 911. Oh boy, that's too many. Under this deck we have coherence and I'll just lay these out in threes, I think. Remembrance, cosmic flower, and allowance on the top row. Then we have number 12, change, coming under remembrance. 34, passion, coming under cosmic flower. 10, authority, coming under allowance. And then we have 24 Earth, again, coming underneath Remembrance and Change. And then under Cosmic Flower and Passion, we have the Solar Plexus Chakra. And then under Allowance and Authority, we have Transition. So Change in Authority, Allowing with authority and transition is like allowing ourselves to sub possibly surrender in some type of a way or someone who is already a practiced authority figure is maybe allowing someone else to have the floor or to speak or to seeing the wisdom and power and potential in another. And then lastly, we have Synergy. And I'll go ahead and put that right here in the center bottom. And the 19 Delight card is popping out behind Coherence here. So I'll just leave that like that. So we've got both change and transition. And so Remembrance Change Earth talks about the remembering the way that things were, having this change evidenced in the middle is like, that remembrance of the way things were is almost the epiphany that things are so much different than they have been in the bat or the deep past and so it's talking to me with this earth part about traditions social roles social identities the ways that it that it was demonstrated to us during our early stages of formative <coughs> formative memory <coughs> excuse me this Remembrance card is just remembering how much change has been evoked and manifested in your own life, seeing where you've been, how you've come through different challenges and struggles, and what has become as evidenced by that journey on that first row. And in the center, cosmic flower, passion solar plexus and then our extra synergy. <clears throat> it's 
I'm seeing cosmic flower as maybe the early teenage throughout the late 20s period of life where the development of that Mars energy starts to take precedence because the early part of life is the mercurial part where we're developing speech and interaction and uh, mirroring behaviors and then we go into Venus, the Venusian aspect of bonding and the first flowering of, you know, that adolescence and the first romantic um, leanings, maybe for some, and moving into from that romantic leanings and ideation into the true development of passions in the way that both moving into the physical realms of manifestation with body and lover, but also for some, not all, um, but this aspect of self-development, self-individuation, where you develop your own passions and your own um, preferences and things that make you happy or things that make you contemplative or that light you up. And so the development of passions comes on the heels of that adolescence where we have now, instead of just that blush of romance, now we have this passion and drive, and that's the shift from that Venus into then the development of more and more of the, the subjective self and the development of ego. And from passion with solar plexus, it's also the talking about how to appropriately leverage the will and authority with others to both be attractive to the um, to the beloved, the target, and how to appropriately gain friends and social um, inclusion. And so it's the use of our will and the assertion of our passions and our ability to to kind of I see that cosmic flower as the social identity, the what allows us to generate the parts of ourselves that other people will will affirm, right? It's the development of this self-nectar, like, oh, look at me and my magnetism and what gets me recognition, acceptance, or friends, or something, right? And then that develops into that fiery, passionate self-belief and the assertion of our will and how we use those those opportunities eventually develops into synergy and how we are being both seen by others the amount of connectivity bonding and uh, cooperation co-creation that we can work through with others the amount of domination limits our creative potential in actual output where the connectivity and drawing each other both into the center with mutual inclusion unlocks that creative potential for many but I think that too while I say that during the adolescence into the early 20s there's a big part of that individuation that seems like alienation and isolation so that the forces that be kind of help us to insulate ourselves against rejection or perceived pre rejection and to possibly go within or to express and dominate outwardly so it's that the development of how we're using our energy here in the center row and in the end with the the nine leading straight into the ten allowance and authority and then transition. So a firm and sweeping change is coming through or has come through influencing our traditional way of self-expression and the way that we use our inner toolbox to obtain our, our goals and our endpoints 
in uh, allowing someone else to maybe help us work through something that may have seemed quite normal and predictable, this earth, this tradition, this embedded energy that we've been operating within, and then allowing another in influencer to come in and help us to shift from that stagnant energy of tradition and into this new phase of understanding what really makes us happy like maybe it's challenge that makes you happy like I will say one thing that that did surprise me was when I moved from working at a day job I will say in a direction that I wasn't interested in going but I was good at it and then I started having a deeper awakening and being drawn more and more into the realms where I'm at now and so I started really pulling away from those things and then when I moved fully into my own space and working from home I noticed 1111 there that in the workplace in the outer world the external world there was so much friction and there were so many dynamic uh, displays of differences and um, personal self-expressions dressing hairstyles and navigating those different characteristics and personality aspects and pre presentation of my own and softening and navigating with my own projections and receptivities and then moving from that dynamic place that was highly creative because then I took all of that inside of myself in a way that was like discerning and looking at and sorting and producing preferences and resonance, true resonance versus, oh no, I wouldn't wear that in a million years, but good for that person, you know, or something like that, you know. Those external judgments can come back and then as we're honing those, those preferences, there's an extreme amount of internal pressure now because we've had so much stimulation that now that is seeking outlets and without healthy outlets, pre-planned or creative outlets that are enjoyable that we can pour ourselves into or even pour our angst and animosity and misgivings into like if you're into something that's um, more assertive and dynamic like like let's say dance or um, martial arts or something along those lines or just anything that's more active there's a way that that energy really pushes through and moves through all of the body centers awakening and becoming something and so that's like literally creation through cooperative aspects and components coming in and stimulating our sensibilities and tweaking our passions to create that bloom cycle for that cosmic flower that we're growing and maturing into and um then when I worked on my own, I noticed that all of a sudden there was this lack of external stimulation. I was trying to be um, very dedicated and fix and get that backlog of task lists done. So I spent a lot of time alone. I treasured it. I did all of my inner work that I could ever think of doing in a day for a long time. And then I started noticing that the channel started kind of drying up because I was so used to gaining my input and my stimulation from those environments that suddenly I was, um, it was affecting my, my expression of my passions. And it started as affecting my self-identity because I was used to being in a certain flow, in a certain way. Um, there's this aspect of being outwardly mobile and productive when you're working for another person it's like oh what do you do for a living everybody wants to know and then before you uh, really get your bearings about why and who and what and how you're getting things done it's hard to get that good elevator pitch where you're like oh well I uh, help a bunch of people to see the way forward you know what am I am I a counselor am I a therapist not really um, Am I a, a woo-woo tarot reader? Not to some people's estimation, perhaps. And so with my own journey and perhaps something that you're working on, 
when it's something personally creative that you've especially held close to your chest for a long time from way back when or addresses those issues that you had to deal with way back in your origin story, then there's this aspect of self-protective energies nesting and hiding away that aspect of self and kind of maybe not quite understanding at first how to present that, but then this allowance of inner authority is coming up within yourself. Um, and I see there's some type of just, and I said allowing someone to be an authority, but I think that it's allowing ourselves to be that inner authority now that I'm talking through the messages. So at 1543, let's get into the, to the shamanic decks to tell us a little bit more. Many masks the authentic self under the deck here. And Drifter experiencing life as it comes. So, yeah, there's something about the social identity having gotten through to this point of life and it, the journey has changed you. It was not as was possibly personally or previously expected, not 100%. And remembering those reasons and those things that can truly light you up. A couple popping out. Netcaster. Preparations come to fruition. And I read one of the dial messages that had been sitting under my chair. I don't know if it was from last reading. And it said something about casting the net quite wide, but in doing so, nothing is able to make its way through the net without being caught and contemplated. Um, it's like not allowing that limited judgment to allow the way that, or to dictate maybe the way that people come and show themselves to you. And in your universal love and acceptance and unconditional um, acceptance and tolerance, this allowance here allows you to self-forgive and to continue to shift and change and be open to new experiences and to have all those experiences and not allow the importance and the relevance behind those experiences to not allow the the subtle subliminal teachings to escape your attention and in doing so everything you've been preparing for that has changed you by means of this unexpected different path here fruition is it's now time for fruition things are coming into being taming the wind so the winds of change coming through and being able to to be the force that kind of harnesses chaos in your own life and to then claim that and it's like it's like that creative impulse, all of the stimulation coming through into the net and then being able to take what resonates, what um, seems to clash and to be able to sort and release all that doesn't serve and in that way taming the chaos so that we're not full of chaos but then we're taking what doesn't serve and we're alchemizing that and then pushing it through in an uplifted, changed, non-judgmental type of a form here. And that's what I'm seeing as this taming of the wind is taking all that stimulation into the self, all of the channel, all of the personal journey, and to be able then to sculpt it into something very personal, expressive, and creative, something that expresses your inner passions and helps you to further bloom. And by expressing your own personal identity and unique traits, this offers you as a whole individual to others in synergy, I'm feeling. So then we have lightning. So if this isn't something that has already occurred to you, it may be something that is just showing itself now in in something like maybe you used to have a hobby and you're getting back into it too because there's this remembrance changing earth something that you you used to do that used to make you very happy and you haven't um, been doing it in a while 
you may be at mastery level in this in this uh, hobby or something and have been taking it maybe for granted I want to say beast of plenty choices and their consequences I feel like that is that um, but you have a lot of talent and a lot of a lot of potential to unlock this passion and to really evolve yourself in this way and to make a unique name for yourself that will that will outlast the third dimensional self to create that sense of legacy for self and others that will re remain and so this lightning inspiration here was coming through in the pre-shuffle as well as again yesterday we had something about the feminine outburst or sticking up or or making a declaration or a demonstration the seer the rattle and 57 unmarked trail revelation so the revelation card was out yesterday too under the deck we have the dream thief refusal of the call so I think we'll stick it there and then I'm seeing root girl poking out here group think and then moon made in new beginnings So this is the um, the impact here with Root Girl, the impact of someone or something or an inner saboteur that comes along and wants to tell you to give it all up, to just pack it in, or to speak ill of your of yourself, your face, your body, your your mind, your Spirit, your impact and your and your influence upon the world and upon yourself and others. There's some kind of dream thief element here, which we're being told not to not to necessarily demonize it. It's part of the rattling our cage to get us to continue to stand up and to allow our authority to to declare no and yes in the correct opportunity and um, to take those opportunities I mean so to tame the wind so seer with lightning there's a, a revelation here which is happening I'm feeling this look at that core it's in the core of this figure here with the sword in this chaotic hurricane here with lightning all over it and have you seen those balls that are, it's like a little crystal ball, like I'm seeing with this guy here. And when you touch it, then all of the lightning goes at your, at your hand at the contact point. I'm kind of feeling like you are that touch point here. You're this enormous generator of energetic potential. And this may be because of suppression or repressed energies or because of your ability to see through something, but then this un in awareness or unawareness, lack of awareness of how to portray and communicate these messages forward in a, in a specific way maybe, or maybe if you are, you're not meeting or reaching in the the right audience or something here but I'm seeing that that this is all part of the process this um, gathering and you are one of these touch points that is an activation point so it's not about the number of um, validations that are received in any one point the lightning bolt is divine in itself. So don't judge your, your gift, don't judge your your product. It's whether or not it's received in the moment, it's essential for 
the next leg of the journey for the greater collective. It's somehow plugging you into your, your purpose and sometimes seeing is believing, but sometimes believing is seeing, as the saying goes. And so you've had this gift, you've had this impulse, perhaps for a long time, and you're being activated by something, by some type of opportunity or windfall or maybe something is being given to you. But anyways, there seems to be this critical mass reached within the self where you are activating others and this rattle here is part of I'm seeing all these spiritual tools that came out in the pre-shuffle too I had drum, I had the uh, scimitar in the Kali deck, now the rattle here and I was seeing a couple other things as tools that normally wouldn't be seen as tools such as like this crystal ball um, and that sword in the lightning card it's like we may have many more tools and resources at our disposal than we could itemize if we're looking at our material so-called wealth. So there's something coming to our attention here, and I feel the rattle. The rattle to me does a couple things, and one of them is when you kind of rattle it through the auric shield, sometimes it helps to to shake loose any stagnant energies, to liberate anything that might be sitting in there. It also kind of is a very gentle summoning to spiritual beings on the other side of the veil to gather. And it makes music. There's something about connectivity of our energy and some type of musical tool that really unlocks certain parts of the past and and future even. We can remember the future sometimes. I'm seeing the seer as somebody who might have the gift of prophecy, timing, or just instincts in the moment and not knowing why you want to do something but having that impulse and trusting that impulse and following it without judgment and just understanding that in following this, there must be some element of delight, even if it's just in giving myself the authority to go a different way or have a new experience or to just say yes to our intuition and see what it is that our intuition would show us if we went a different direction for once. Instead of our, our main course to work or to the grocery store, taking a different way, even if you think it might take you a little bit longer. I took a different way the other day and I was able to help a turtle across the road. I mean, not everybody's going to go and do that, but, you know, maybe that's the biggest thing that you could do that entire day. And who's to judge that that's any better or worse than, than having gotten to work five minutes early and to check your voicemail that much earlier or something like that. So the unmarked trail, revelation, it's all about taking the other course here, some type of a way, either mentally, emotionally, energetically, physically, to somehow break with tradition, to recognize the changing nature of self and the evolution that came through the who, what, why, where, and when, and why, why we've become this, this way now this snapshot in time and to then see past, present, future timelines here to see through that and to, and to work differently with self and with others. And there's something in this trail, unmarked trail, that we're being asked to trailblaze something that hasn't been done. So if you're looking for a mentor or looking for how others have done it, it's a great reference point. It's a great way to see what other people have had good luck and bad luck with. But take into consideration all of these other people have different habits. They're going to nurture and, and advance and effort in different ways than yourself. Um, if they're using the land, the climate is different. The soil is different. Um, the water is different. The minerals are different. So it's great to reference and to get yourself into those situations but 
uh, with Dream Thief here, there's something about not being disillusioned or falling back into self-pity, which is a difficult place to break free of, um, to forgive ourselves and to understand that no matter what comes towards us, we always are empowered to change. That's one of the only things we have the power to do is to shift something. And if it doesn't happen the first time, we're not going to go out and shift a major entrenched way of being with one decision unless it's a very critical decision in the moment. But it's all about one foot in front of the other here until that lightning strike hits where there's that epiphany moment and then the the trail is revealed. It's like finding the break in a really long hedge in a labyrinth maze like is depicted here and all of a sudden seeing that break in the in the hedge where there's the way forward. And I was really enjoying the imagery that came through that card over the last few. So there is a little element of blending with animal totems here between Taming the Wind and the Seer. It was coming through yesterday as the masculine feminine aspects were blending within one image that I had on the card. We have the Kuan Yin cards coming out now. Lotus Throne and under the deck Sisters of the Star Blossoms. 27 and 37, another 10 distance apart. So yeah, with these two, yesterday I was seeing the masculine and feminine as two sides of one face, like that shape-shifting element again from before. But I'm seeing these two cards as maybe two individuals in a situation maybe. You can see her face there, but you can see both cards there's this blending of the person and there's like this accumulation of, of debris, uh, natural debris, animal instincts. With the seer I'm seeing a mountain lion and um, the skull of something with horns, whether that's a deer or something like that, and then a bird up here. She has her own bird appearing to be a falcon and lots of feathers maybe wild turkey feather and then another bird I don't know if that's crow anyways I'm seeing a couple things here like the seer energy might be more of the mountains of the forest might be hunter gatherer type well more of a hunter type and that came out yesterday too and her more of the gatherer type more of a communicator and seeing the tree coming off of her crown as well there's something about that that may be coming out in your own story so I'm gonna go ahead and try to Keep this moving. So Sisters of the Star Blossoms here is uh, the same card that came out yesterday. So these are timeless, but they do build on each other, I've noticed. So Sisters of the Star Blossoms is talking about the long ago, the Pleiades were known as the Star Blossoms. And so the Pleiades is one of the main star structures. I do believe that that is where we have Sirius B in that general direction. And then some people that identify as star seeds, um, I believe that part of the Pleiades is also Andromeda. Um, so there's several clusters over there that people identify with having some type of, of remembrance of the connection between them and those cultures. And so you may find yourself in situations where you may have some type of a vision that you're building and it seems kind of beyond you or beyond the times. 
and you may be the only one capable of seeing the value of that vision and others may not be jumping on top of that vision but you're the one who has been pushed back to do this on your own up until now and yesterday's I saw this as having reached the center here of the labyrinth then there's this coming up coming up coming up and in here it's like you didn't even realize you were already swirling and twisting and shrinking to this point of uh, complete comprehension understanding and coherence here you still have that coherence and then that zero point energy expanding um, exponentially outward and being able to then sort of see from an above and beyond perspective and having that seed still contained within yourself but being able to encapsulate the the journey in that type of a way so to see something from its end point but still being seated and um, and embodied in the present tense that center point it's like we've reached the point of of no return and because of that there's this epiphany that we're the one who's leading some type of of enterprise or group or we're doing something that will gain a following later somehow but we're the ones that are setting up the trail we're blazing trails we're creating inroads in the labyrinth so that and signposts so that others can make their way through that may not have that same impulse or intuition so the lotus throne here is being able to ascend the throne and it talks again about this authority card and comes over the transition in authority it's like maybe you've been following many many people many other ideologies and now there's this accumulated knowledge and awareness where now you can put everything together it's the right time it's the right inspiration and there's the right support group here and self-belief that helps you to just kind of stand in your authority and say you know what I do have this I am a spiritual badass and two times in the Alana Fairchild deck when I was doing the pre-shuffle I was looking up a couple cards that came out and two cards said badass and I was reminded reminded that one of my good friends recently um, brought me back a magnet from one of her journeys and it said something like um, oh, I can't remember the first one spiritual something crystal toting oh the last part was spiritual badass or something like that and anyways it's a really cute one I'll have to I'll have to figure out what it says but they those two cards were just reminding me of that so there's something definitely here about having underestimated your own self or your own journey or um, just too many doubts about your creative potential and bringing something forward but there's something that's being unlocked for you and if you choose to move into that direction then it's opening for you now so under here on top of the dream thief landed the trauma bonding card so don't get caught up in any of these old patterns of allowing someone else to either speak for you or or to take charge and control of your judgment or your path or your activities and have them all of a sudden dictating and having you jump on board and supporting their stuff and leaving yours in the dust and under the deck what flipped was trust issues I'll put that one with that so know the difference also between somebody who is a trauma bond and um, why you have trust issues with people who are not trauma bond. So sorting those out is coming through too. The hands that are clapping for you in your next mode and those who are not. And then here we have Earth Star Chakra Unity. This kind of takes us into that unity consciousness, into the core of the earth and what connects all humans is that lower nature of fear and anxiety in the embodiment phase. And if we're not in body, embodying our full potential self, our spirit self in our physical vessel, 
then we'll be disconnected from unity and we'll be outside of the self. We won't be able to access the center of the labyrinth. It won't be the seed at the center. There's probably all kinds of lemmings. Also, you know, strolling the perimeter, completely inverted outside and, and blinded. And let's not be that guy. Next, heart chakra number four. That one popped out in the pre-shuffle too. Being heart-centered instead of based in tradition and having more experiences that will delight the senses helps our coherence and understanding, helps our trust and allowance of both our authority and trusting and allowing the authority of others and separating good, bad, ugly. Pluto, yeah, there's been some control and power aspects in the past that have that have caused huge changes and transitions in the way that we have previously operated and the way that full circle we're coming around to may have been somebody who was addicted or self-medicating in your early childhood and you may have some of those tendencies yourself if you look into even healthy habits can become too much meditation brings solutions so don't allow yourself to get lost on the pathway of differentiation to the point where then you begin operating in similar ways to those that you are trying to push against because that's the the basis of duality is pointing the finger and then having all the other fingers pointing back at the self because we are usually most guilty of reflecting or perpetuating cycles that come to our attention most often. As you'll hear people say, other people are not what you think they are, you are what you think they are. Does this align with your highest path? You may need to retreat from something that um, the words here are fear, aversion, neglect, rejection, abandonment, pride, and ego. We had some failure card yesterday too. I love deep conversations. So then we also have father issues popping out under the Pluto card, crazy enough. Ancestors are sending signs and synchronicities. So father issues is somebody that you feel like that um, you have to do something to gain the approval of, to get those affirming um measures of our value or worth to somebody else and uh, that we need to earn our keep and work our ourselves silly and to gain some type of control or power over a situation, a group of others or self or somehow gaining some type of power or control or status is equated with the father issues in um, success and prosperity but is that your true estimation of that your ancestors are sending you these signs and synchronicities like maybe the money isn't worth it maybe your your sense of self and your um, self-worth and self-care is worth more than some type of super exhausting depleting job situation or relationship so if if someone is um, gaining these messages and feeling challenged to change themselves, self-transformation here is beautiful. And with the self-transformation, some people, things, environments will be cut out and left to the wayside, I feel. And that is also divine. So follow the signs and synchronicities because... Yeah, just because we can identify and have compassion for somebody doesn't mean that they get a seat at the table. 4411 at that time, at that statement there. All right, Dow message and we'll close her out here. Thank you guys so much for all of your interactions so far and for vibing with the channel and helping these messages get out to whoever needs to hear them. We'll take that one. 17. When the master governs, the people are hardly aware that he exists. Next best is a leader who is loved. Next, one who is feared. The worst is one who is despised. 
If you don't trust the people, you make them untrustworthy. The master doesn't talk, he acts. When his work is done, the people say, amazing, we did it all by ourselves. So maybe also there's this double message of having influence and impact upon somebody else that's very crucial to our life. Like, for instance, our children, because we went through this maturation cycle from birth through the 20s, maybe it's a, a life partner or um, a romantic interest, maybe it's somebody, a friend or family member, but there's something here also where by the virtue of, of changing our own self and setting that highest path example and to have that enormous heart and to have that compassionate empathy and forgiveness and to be able to retreat when we've been insulted or disrespected or when our dignity is on the line, to not need the approval of others more than our safety, security, and well-being. My presence and my self-preservation is the only true thing that needs to be mastered in the moment, and then when my safety and security and well-being are attained, then I can care and tend to others. Um, father issues would have you ignore and abuse the self and just keep going as if you have no softer side, you have no self needs and the only thing worth attaining is that status and material abundance without the means or, or generosity to share that with others and to create that connectivity and bonding, right? So follow those signs and synchronicities here and allow yourself to set the standard for somebody else who's watching you um, be the authority in your own life to setting your own healthy self-care boundaries and your own self-limits. It's a beautiful thing. So I'll leave you all there. Thank you so much yet again for joining and we will see you again tomorrow. And on Fridays, I like to post also, in addition to the Daily Dharma, we like to go through and do a you versus them for all signs. Hopefully those are super quick ones. I like to do between 5 and 15 minutes per sign max, but hopefully around the 8, 10-ish would be the, the good average. So we'll see you again tomorrow for that. So take care of yourself, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.